If you're having trouble sleeping, today's episode is going to talk about how using model kits and building can benefit your sleep. Let's get it. Welcome back to season two, episode two of the Plamo Therapist podcast. Season two is the Just Build It series where I talk about how simply building model kits can benefit certain aspects of our life. Last week, we talked about how building model kits can reduce the stress that we may feel. Today, we're talking about how building model kits can allow us to get better sleep and allow us to go to sleep at a more reasonable hour that we may need in order to get more restful sleep throughout the night. So before we can kind of get into how that whole thing plays out and how that works together, let's go ahead and talk about why sleep is important. We'll talk about the biological and emotional factors, as well as the behavioral things that we do that affect our sleep. And then we can talk about how building kits can help us to feel better and help us to sleep better. So first off, why is sleep important? Well, as we all know, sleep is our body's opportunity to recharge, but how exactly does that work? Well, when we go to sleep, our body goes through these things called sleep stages. And when we initially fall asleep, our body goes into what's called deep sleep. And that is our body's physical opportunity to recover um, a lot of the strength based assets that our body has. So our muscles get to grow and things like that. And so the reason that happens is because it was important for our bodies. If we needed to wake up in the middle of the night, we needed to make sure our bodies had the best opportunity to get us out of a dangerous situation versus having our brains get the ability to interpret the situation and then have a feeling about it afterwards. And so our bodies prioritize the physical recovery first. And then as the night progresses on, we shift over into to the mental recovery and then our bodies once it gets both the physical and the mental recovery done then it starts to wake up and so that sort of transition from the deep sleep to REM sleep and then to waking up is what happens on a normal sleep schedule but what happens when we affect that sleep schedule what happens when we decide to go to bed maybe a few hours later but we still need to wake up at the same time. For example, instead of going to bed at 10 o'clock, we go to bed at midnight, but we're still waking up at 6 a.m. to go to work, meaning we lose two hours of sleep. What happens to those two hours and what does our bodies do? Well, unfortunately, when we lose those two hours, our bodies don't sit down and be like, hey, we're losing two hours of sleep tonight. So let's go ahead and adjust when we start our REM sleep. And that way we can make sure that, you know, the body does get a chance to recover, but the brain also gets a chance to recover. And then we both kind of lose out a little bit equally. Unfortunately, our bodies don't do that. Instead, it takes the entire sleep block and it just pushes it over. Meaning we take the sleep schedule. We still focus on the physical recovery first, but at the end of the night, when we get our mental recovery, that's getting cut off because we still were waking up at the same time that we need to. Six o'clock rolls around and our brains aren't quite done doing our full recovery yet. And then our alarm goes off and now we need to wake up. And so because our brains didn't get that physical recovery section, we start to get the biological factors here at play which is we still have the higher amount of cortisol in our brains and that's leading us to be a little bit more irritable as soon as we wake up because we're still feeling a little bit of the stress from the day before because our stress level our stress hormone is still present because of that we also haven't been able to fully process that means our brain hasn't been able to fully recover yet meaning we're only working at 60 70 80 percent capacity that we normally would meaning we're having a trouble concentrating and staying focused on tasks that are really important on top of that, now with the added levels of cortisol, we have a weakened immune system, making us more susceptible to getting sick. And so with that additional stress, we start to, you know, get a little bit of this metabolic change because as we're staying awake a little bit later, our bodies need to address the amount of energy it uses for the amount of time that we stay up. And so that can lead to shifts in our metabolic clock which can also lead to unintended weight gain or weight loss, which can now add to the stress that we feel. So if you go to bed later, we have more cortisol in our blood that remains that carries over into the next day and our bodies carry that over and it feels it, it senses it and our brain starts to try to interpret it. So those feelings of the added cortisol is the biological factors of our affected sleep. And now let's talk about the emotional components of it. Our body feels the heightened sense, the heightened cortisol levels, the added stress, and it tries to make sense of it. So when we feel that added stress, we wake up, we already know that we're feeling bad. So we feel angry or maybe we feel a little bit upset. We wake up cranky. That's kind of what it is, is just our body is still processing that stress and that stress is right there. So we're feeling it. We're immediately already starting off, you know, 
mad. On top of that, you know, some of the emotional backlog, we didn't get to process some of those emotions. So some of the thoughts that we had from the day before of the things that were bothering us are going to be the fresh things on our mind. Maybe as we were sleeping and we were dreaming, you know, our brains were trying to process that emotion, that feeling, and it comes back up. And the first thing we remember is the thing that our boss did that pissed us off or the thing that a coworker did that made us upset or um, something happened on our way to work that made us upset. And that is the fourth front on our mind. And so the heightened stress levels also means that we have a heightened reaction to more stress. And so sometimes what happens is when this happens, we have a heightened emotional reactivity and we blow things out of proportion because we're having that added stress level. Maybe, you know, we're getting a cup of coffee in the morning, we pay the person and they give us the wrong change and they shorted us two cents. And now over two cents, we decide to, you know what, I'm going to boycott this place. I'm not going to tip the barista and I'm going to just never come back to this place again. When realistically, it's just like, oh, it's two cents. And so this heightened emotional reactivity is our body trying to compensate. And so because it can't effectively compensate, what it's going to start to do is it's going to try to process a lot of these emotions before it starts to fall asleep. And so because once we fall asleep and we fall into that deep sleep, we're not going to be able to process those emotions. So in order to try to counteract that and be more proactive, we start to think about the things that were bothering us. Our brain starts to process a lot of the feelings, those emotions, and we start to develop this thing called bedtime worry. And bedtime worry is just our brain's attempt at trying to address the issues that weren't addressed yet. And probably the most inopportune time, because that's the last time we have left before we have to start the next day. And so we start to get into this habit of we feel this anxiety before we go to bed. And that's the emotional side of it. And then that changes that in turn makes us need to want to react to that. And this is where the behavior components come into how we affect our sleep. And so with our bedtime worries now we want to try to address those feelings we're feeling a lot of it a lot of stress we're feeling a lot of anxiety maybe about things that are going on and now we are like hey i need to do something about this and the easiest thing to do when it comes to trying to forget about the stress forget about the problems that are going on as we grab our phones and we do the doom scroll we open up instagram we open up tiktok facebook youtube whatever it may be and we start to scroll through endless amounts of content. And while our brains aren't actively processing the things anymore, the stress levels are staying there, staying constant, with the added now bombardment of new videos, of now comparing ourselves to new content creators and whatnot, our stress levels are increasing even further. And now instead of being in a place where we're more ready to go to sleep, we're now actually less ready to go to sleep. On top of that, there's studies that show that with a with a doom scroll and with watching TV or playing video games before bed, when we use screens to try to get out of trying to fall asleep or trying to avoid a lot of the feelings that we have, the blue light on the screens that we are looking at now triggers our brain's um, sleep or circadian schedules. It sees the bright lights and says, hey, it's still daytime. And so it starts to adjust our metabolism and our body's sleep schedules because it still feels like it's daytime. So when we finally finish playing or we finally snap out of a doom scroll and we decide, no, it's time to go to bed and we turn our screens off. Now our bodies are still in that phase of, hey, wait, it was just bright out. It's still it's still daytime, right? And so we get into this habit of feeling like we're still wide awake when we know we need to be going to bed, but now we can't because we've added to more stress levels. We've triggered our brain circadian rhythm to stay awake with the screens. And now we're lying in bed and staying awake even later than we normally would than if we hadn't done the doom scroll. And so we start to go to bed. We wake up the next day, we go through a day and then we're just stressed. And because it takes us a little bit more, it takes us a little bit longer to kind of go through a day. At the end of the day, we're sitting down and we're like, man, I didn't even get to do any of the things that I wanted to do. And now instead of, you know, hey, if I go try to go to sleep, I'm not going to go to sleep anyway, so I should stay awake. Now you're just choosing to do other things to keep yourself awake or to fill that time. You're now saying, I'm going to put off sleep because I want to do something else instead. You're going to say, like, I need to take care of myself. I'm going to go play video games and play, you know, and try to stay awake. And so we get into this pattern of revenge sleep delay. We do things intentionally to avoid going to sleep. And so when we get into that habit, now we're forcing ourselves to stay awake longer and we're just continuing the cycle of just losing a lot of sleep and so when all of that biology all of that behavior and all of those emotions start to come into play 
it's hard to kind of really overcome all of this actual just survival programming that we have you know what can we do to overcome that how does building model kits you know fit into this and now change some of the behaviors the emotions and the biology in our body our chemistry our wiring you know how does building model kits allow us to get more beneficial sleep well the first thing model kits does is when we build model kits we're taking away our justification for revenge sleep delay that one's immediately out the window because now we're purposefully building in time to do something that makes us feel better and we're doing something that we enjoy and so by building that specific time into our day we take away the justification for a revenge sleep delay pattern on top of that as we talked about in our last video building model kits is a stress reliever when we start to sit down and build it triggers our relaxation and our recovery methods and it starts to clear out or gives our brain an opportunity to clear out the cortisol that it normally would throughout the day it's not as the same as our REM sleep but it gives us an opportunity to clean out some of it as much as we possibly can and so by doing that now we start to address some of these stresses that we're feeling some of the emotions that we may have had throughout the day because now we're giving ourselves the opportunity to process these things and now we're addressing the bedtime worries we're not going to bed thinking about a lot of these things because we've had the build time to address it we've sat down we've processed our day we thought about the things that made us upset we let it go we accept that that's kind of just how that person is or maybe you know our boss just talks like that it gets under my skin there they can be a little bit more respectful but hey it's not a big deal we process those emotions and we move on and then now instead of looking at a screen instead of looking at a tv a monitor you know we're now looking at a model kit in front of us. And normally in the house, we don't really use bright and white lights like this. Normally we use a little bit more warmer light, something like this one here. And the warmer lights don't trigger our blue light receptors in our eyes as much, meaning we don't feel like it's as much of an earlier daytime as we would if we were using, you know, more like the bright office lights because the white light is more um, akin to bright daytime light. And so as we're building our model kits with our warmer lights, we're taking our eyes away from the screen and our brains are starting to process the ambience around it. The warmer tones, more like sunset, triggers our brain to think, hey, the sun's going down, it's time to go to bed. And so when we're done building our model kits and we put it away, our brains and our bodies are now more physically ready to go to sleep. And that is how simply building model kits and building time really into our day to build model kits can benefit our sleep schedules. So how do we maximize this benefit? Well, as we said, we can set the time aside to build our model kits, which is going to address our revenge sleep delay. But if we set it up in a time that allows us um, to be able to engage in this activity, undisturbed preferably before bedtime that would be kind of best you can set 15 20 30 45 minutes before you fall asleep and that would be a good time frame when it comes to start and stop times it would be good to have a little bit more of a flexible start and stop time reason being is that you want to give yourself the opportunity to process the transition into the build space meaning okay let's turn off all the distractions you know we can put some maybe we can probably put something on in the background but something that we're not going to watch you know we don't want to expose our eyes to the tv for the blue lights you know maybe have some just music on in the background so now we're focusing our eyes are focused now on the model kit in front of us you know we can start to build and then at the end it's not like okay hard cut off we got to drop our nippers and just go to jump in the bed no it's like okay uh, let me finish this step here and then go to bed and this primes our brain to transition okay we're finishing this step now we're getting ready to go to sleep it gives our body the um the space that it needs the time that it needs and the thought processing speed that it needs in order to say okay this task is done. The next task is sleep. And so when we build it into our schedule like that, now we're using our model kits to prime ourselves and give ourselves a routine around our bedtime. It gives us an opportunity to clear up a lot of the thoughts and a lot of the feelings that we had throughout our day. It de-justifies or removes the justification for a revenge sleep delay pattern. And now we're able to go to bed having processed a lot of these emotions, having avoided a lot of the blue lights that help us to keep up and reduce the cortisol overall in our bodies to get more restful sleep. And that is how simply building model kits can help you to not only go to sleep, but also get more restful sleep. So 
with that said guys i hope you guys enjoyed today's video let me know what you thought in the comments below and with that said take care of yourselves take care of each other go do what you love and i'll see you in the next one